got um yeah, let me check facebook perfect let's see welcome welcome good morning everybody good morning good, good morning, morning. Good morning. make sure we are good perfect okay we are all good to go. Summer, are you good? I know you said you're good. Too. Perfect. I just want to make sure my camera is okay. You know what? Let me see which camera I'm using. Okay. I'm making sure I'm using the right camera. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Let's see. I want to make sure everything looks good. Yeah, on me. It works. So I see it. I see it on Facebook. So boom. We should be good. Okay. Awesome. So I am super excited. Oh, see, I do that every single time. Almost, almost don't hit record because I don't start it right now. So let's see. Ready? Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Comerica Business Bootcamp series. I am so excited to be here with every single one of you today. Um, for those of you who do not know me, my name is A. Margot Blair. I am the founder of Discover Her Worldwide. And I'm super excited to bring this conversation um, to you. Again, we are focusing on um, the Comerica Business Bootcamp series is really um, 12 bi-weekly trainings workshops where we're focusing on helping nonprofit founders, professional service providers, and corporate leaders remain proactive in increasing their knowledge, developing skills as we navigate this post-COVID world together. And so I am super grateful that not only do we get to bring this training to each and every single one of you, but we get to do that with our sponsor, Comerica Bank. So I just wanna take a moment to introduce to you Summer, who is the Vice President of one of the Comerica locations here in Arizona. And so Summer, go ahead, please introduce yourself and, and take the floor. Thank you, thank you, Margo. So we are super excited to be here. Um, Comerica has um, basically an involvement with the community and our main purpose to, to work with the community is making sure we're doing everything that we can to support, to help, to to allow the community to thrive because let's be honest i mean if the community is thriving the bank's thriving so we were just like let's make it happen let's make it work and uh, the boot camp series is actually an extension of our normal comerica business sense program which is typically like a six-month program you go through it and you understand and running a business you know how to run a business how to push past your passion but the boot camp was pr put on due to covid i mean there was a pandemic people need to know how do i survive now how do i work my business now um, how do I work, you know, PPP? How do I work the, um, the idle loans? How, will we, how do we work this environment, this new environment that we're in? How long is it gonna last? I don't have the answers to everything, but we do have answers to understand how to run your business today. You know, how to succeed today in business and whether you're starting a business, whether your business has been around for five years, whether you just need to understand, you know, what do I do in the virtual space of this business in this new era? So that's what the business boot camp was there. It was presented just to make sure we answer questions that are readily available and resources that are readily available so that people can understand what to do in this timing. Uh, so I'm super excited. Uh, we are we have 17 locations here in Arizona for Comerica Bank and our retail branch. And then we also have our corporate office here. Uh, we're based in Dallas, Texas, and um, we are a large bank. We're a $75 billion bank, but we operate as if we are a small town bank. So we're super excited to be here. We, any questions you might have, feel free to ask. And um, I'm kind of just here in the background. Any, any questions, any answers, I'm, I'm kind of here. So send it back to you, Margo. And thank you so much for allowing Comerica to be here. Thank you again, Summer. We're so grateful to have you and have you with us. So today, you guys, today's conversation, I'm so excited about, and I think I've said this every time we've gathered that I'm excited. I'm excited and not only because of the topics that we're going to be focusing on and bringing to you all, but because of the individuals who are going to be facilitating with us. And today I have a good friend of mine who is, I'm calling her a pro, the project management guru. And she, for those of you who are, have been following the, um, or have seen the, the graphics where we are breaking project management into two 
parts. We could not cover everything in 90 minutes. So we needed to break it into two parts. So we have two phenomenal experts who are going to be joining us. Um, one is this week with Mewa, and then the next, um, in two weeks, we're going to be joined with Bianca. And so again, today we're focusing on project management, part one, where we're going to be focusing on SOPs, standard operations procedures. Um, we are going to focus on corrective action plans as well, work breakdown structures. And so if you don't know what any of those mean, grab your pen, grab your paper and get comfy because you are going to want to make sure that you grab all that you can from today's conversation. And so before we dive all the way in, I want to just take a moment to give some brief housekeeping as a few of you are, are joining back in or joining in to, to today. So everyone go ahead and take out your phone, look at the screen. I know you guys are on it, we are on it. Let us know so we can pose for you. Um, take a picture and post that on your social media platform. But also at any point through this conversation that you find a quotable or a, a point that is just completely resonated with you, where you are in your business, where you are with life, definitely go ahead and not only write that down in your notepad, but go ahead and take time to write that down and post it to social media with the hashtag Comerica Business Sense Bootcamp Series. What that allows us to do is go back through after we're done here and see where, what all the gems you received from the conversation today, as well as previous conversations. And so um, as always, go ahead and share, share, share. If there's another founder, um, a service provider that you know should be in the room specifically regarding project management, go ahead and invite them now. Um, and then as as well, share. So again, right as we dive in, today's conversation is focusing on project management, the keys to establishing your operating procedures and corrective action plans. So I just wanted to take a moment. Um, again, my name is A. Margot Blair, for those of you who do not know me. And my background is um, focusing on professional development and helping individuals um, grow their partnership portfolio through events. So the time that I, over the last decade, um, I have hosted different um, training workshops, um, um, conferences and things like that. And the the, the beautiful piece is being able to bring uh, groups, diverse groups of women into one space where we're focusing on business, life, and finances. And so these conversations where we're bringing to you the Comerica Business Bootcamp series, it is for the founder, the individual who may be stuck in a particular situation or just wants to sharpen their skills, get a little bit more knowledge or get a little bit more clear on what it is that they're doing right now for their business to also scale and generate additional revenue for their events. So before I introduce you to um, our guest facilitator today, I wanted to just share a, a little bit of uh, a story. And you know, if you know anything about me, I put my business out all the time because I didn't always have it together. And there's still spaces where I'm growing in my business. And so I want to first say, it's super essential that regardless of where you are along your journey, the first thing that you want to be sure that you're doing is being honest and transparent with where you are right now. It's great to have goals. It's great to have visions. It's great to see where you want to be. But in order to get there, you have to be transparent with where you are right now and then connect with the people who are going to help add value to you. And one of the other things you probably have heard me say is that it's, it, it can't just be you reaching out and asking for others. You have to be willing to extend something that you bring to the table as well. And we over here call that a mutual benefit exchange. And so one of the things that I found um, as I started figuring things out was that I didn't have my um, standard operating procedures. I, I knew everything that I was doing up here, but that was because I was wearing all of the hats in my business. And I'm sure several of you can attest to that, whether that's something that you are experiencing right now, you happen to be wearing all of the hats, or that's something that you have recently come out of because you're starting to grow your team or finding ways to begin to build your team. And so what ends up happening when you try and wear all these hats and you don't have a documented process, you end up doing double, triple or quadruple the work. 
you're not able to replicate what you do, my, uh, meaning that you're not able to bring quality people onto the team as well, you aren't able to make your impact. And so one of the things that I learned as I started figuring out, okay, what is standard operating procedures? What do I need to do for my own business? I started reaching out to other people for that support. And so I just want you um, to, to listen to date with an open ear, with an open mind, and any questions you have, we are all here to answer those questions. And so without further ado, I am super excited, super honored to introduce you to today's facilitator, Mewa. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Thank you. So um, before we get to all the juicy nuggets, why everybody is here, can you tell us a little bit more about you? What, what got you into project management? What is, you know, what are you currently doing right now as well? Um, why is the conversation around project management super important for founders? Um, I would say, you know, I was a project manager from since I was young, you know, like I was always planning events. Um, I was a vice president of the marketing club, always organizing things, putting t things together. At that time, I didn't know it was called project management. Um, so then I joined the military, kind of was trying to figure out, you know, my way through life. And then I managed a project and I had the, you know, the PMO person um, in the army say, you know, you're a project manager. So um, that's kind of how, you know, I was introduced to being a project manager and actually giving myself that title. Um, I'm currently a senior project manager at Allstate, um, you know, just working on transformative growth um, projects. I'm in the product management space. So just enhancing those projects, like the different projects that come along with that, like go to market strategies, um, things of that nature. Uh, so I would, you know, say I'm a project, I've been a project manager for life. <laughs> so I would definitely say that. Um, I also own a, my own business or a side hustle. Um, I help small businesses with their small initiatives and projects and kind of help them get from the ideation stage to execution um, and then helping them transform their ideas into tangible um, objects and things and help them better design their business. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> I love that. And so the other part of the question, what, why is project management important? Why do, why do we need it? If we're business, we're in business, we're, in, we're running nonprofit, why, why do we need project management? Um, it sounds like there's so much involved with it. So it's like, why can't we just like wing it and, and just do whatever? Well, I'll break it down by giving you like a brief definition of project management, like something simple, clear and concise. Um, Project management is basically a series of tasks that are needed to help you reach a goal or obtain a goal or, or an objective. So a lot of the times, um, business owners, creatives, um, you know, tech, tech folks have this great idea and they know like the end result, but they don't necessarily know the things that need to happen um, in between to get there. So project management is very imperative. Um, basically, for you to understand what you're doing, what your goals are, how you're going to get there, the resources that you need, um, the team, if you need a team, and then to also, if you want to bring someone on board, you can kind of like bring them on board, be able to tell them what you're trying to do, how you're trying to do it, instead of going back to that ideation stage again. So project management is very important for communication, communication wise, mm -hmm. keeping you on track, um, and then, you know, even for budgeting purposes as well. That's very, very important. So one of the things that you just mentioned was that project management is important for communication. Um, is this communication with the entire team, the founder? Can you talk a little bit more about how project communication plays a role? Um, I would say it communication is in like various facets. It's like your, your end user whoever you're trying to uh, communicate your message to, your value proposition, I would say, you know, that project will help you align basically your requirements, things that you need um, in order to achieve what you're trying to, your outcome. So your to outcome. your end, yeah, to your end user, and then also to your team. Because if you're doing, you know, 
X, Y, and Z, and it's very siloed and no one really knows what you're doing. You, like you said, you mentioned before, you might be doing double work, you're doing double duplicating efforts, things of that nature. So project management helps everyone kind of your team um, be on one accord. So let's give an example, right? So we can use my example as the conference, we can use um, anybody else's example, whether it's any type of project. So you choose, can you really break that down? Um, let's, let's go with somebody working on a program for their organization. What type of components do you feel that are super essential um, for that individual to make sure that program is running fluidly? Um, so you kind of need to, ask questions first, right? So when you're in the ideation stage of your project, you have to ask very insightful questions, imperative questions. First, you have to ask like, what am I trying to accomplish, mm -hmm. right? And then do I have all the resources that I need to accomplish um, that mission? So as far as like a program, there's very different, various different programs. I would say maybe like uh, you want to launch a campaign um, say, hey, we're coming up with this new service within our nonprofit organization, and we want to reach this target audience. So you kind of have to ask questions. Who is your target audience? Yeah. Um, who do you, like, who are your resources? Who do I need to tap into in order to get my message across? And then you kind of schedule a project plan of these are the things that I need to do. These are the things that I, these are the things I need to do to get there. And these are the people I need to get in contact with to help me accomplish this. Um, so that's what I would say, asking questions will help you put together your project plan, kind of help you know where you're currently at. You mentioned um, something, I think we've talked about this every, almost every session. Um, Summer, you, gonna, you can co-sign for that. Knowing your audience. You have to be sure that you are speaking directly to who you want to serve as well, um, my arena, who you want to partner with. And I think it's really essential that we get to, to, to this understanding. And I told you last time, we're going to say it every single time, that we get to a place where we're running our nonprofits like businesses. It's, it, it, we can't put them on the side. We can't just, um, some, somebody that I know, one of my, one of my old coaches, she says, quit solving broke people's problems. And I know that that may hurt some people, but you, we are here to serve. We are here to lead, but we're also here to make impact. And if we aren't looking at our, our companies, our, our organizations as businesses, we aren't going to make as much impact as we desire. And so you mentioned, um, again, I just wanted to make sure to, to drive that point home. And I probably will have a home a few more times as, as we go through these series, but identifying who it is that you wanna serve and then making sure that the projects that, that you're going to be working on, the initiatives, that another, a, another term for that, is uh, are, are directly in alignment with the mission of your company, of your organization. That's super essential. Um, maybe you, you mentioned also um, when it comes to, um, to, to running these projects, what does it look like to, um, to, to go through the, the steps to really, to really figure out um, how you need to make your project plan, right? Because you, talk, you talked about the steps that, you know, we need to ask these questions, but what, what tools, how do we put a project plan together to be able to access that when we're working on the project, again, with by, whether it's our, by ourselves or with our team? So you kind of have to think about the project that you're working on, right? Um, in project management, there's different frameworks or methodologies, if you will. You know, you got the waterfall, uh, the waterfall approach, you have the agile approach, you got the scum, scrum within that. So it really just depends on, you know, the project that you're trying to implement. Okay. I would say to help you determine what tools you need. Okay. Uh, the tools that I use is like a business requirement document. And that, that document has already had like questions outlined for you to ask. Mm. And then you can also tailor those specific questions on there. And then also it gives you um, a portion of what requirements that you need in order to achieve your outcomes. And who. And then you also have the team charter 
um, on there. So all the people that need to be involved, whether it's, you know, you got user research, um, you know, you got software engineers, if you're trying to implement um, technology, uh, you have marketing, if you're trying to launch a campaign. So your team charter and a business requirement document, I would say would be, should be your starting point. And there are plenty of templates out there online, free resources online that you can kind of get to create your business requirement document and tailor it to your specific needs. Um, I would start there. If you're trying to be a little more agile and you don't wanna waste too much time on your project, you wanna, like how we touched on, you know, what's your target audience and does it align with our mission? But is it gonna create value to the user? And so a lot of the times we waste so much time on a project, we think it's great. And, you know, the end user is like, this does nothing for me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So Absolutely. I would go the agile approach. If you're not trying to waste so much time and money on a project, don't go the waterfall approach, which you would need a business requirement and a team charter for. I would say um, put together a business model canvas, um, a customer journey map. Um, involve the end user um, in in those approaches so that they can kind of see what you're trying to get and whatever you're trying to achieve has value to your end user. Big deal. And so I want to 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 we're gonna hold we're gonna hold a couple people's hands through this conversation because I know some people even reached out to me they were like project management ah what you know how deep are we gonna go and so again this is your thing so you know all of these different things about project management right um so when it comes to some of these terminologies agile and waterfall and, and scrum and all these other components where where can we get started like how do how do we get started because as I'm I just I actually just got a message someone said what are all these terms yeah so we're not going to this we're, we're not going to go through this is the source we're not doing that today but where like if somebody has no idea and and like, no exposure no experience with project management um where do they begin and I I want you you know as you're as you're you know gathering that the, the response to that um I want you to understand all, all of the listeners um our end users um I, I want you really to understand that you're you're not going to get every single thing that you need right right from this conversation this is just the start we want you to begin thinking beyond where you are right now um and again you are likely implementing a lot of the things that we're talking about right now, as well as that we're going to continue to talk about the rest of this conversation. So I wanna be very clear on that. Um, and, and I'm gonna take it away from project management for a second. I kept talking and, and, and saying like, I don't know sales and I don't know marketing. And as I started dig digging deeper and learning more about sales and marketing, and I'm like, oh my goodness, that's copy, that's part of this. And, and so I really knew way more than I was giving myself credit, okay? And so again, don't run for the hills as we're having this conversation and a lot of these things may be new to you, take notes. And if you need, if there's something that um, you have happened to miss, go ahead and put that in the comment section. We have our team also managing the Facebook. So even though we're here live on Zoom, um, you can go ahead and put those questions um, or, or um, if you need clarity, go ahead and put those in the, the, the comments and we will make sure to, to restate or, or add additional clarity to what it is that we're sharing right here. Okay. Um, so my and apologies, I, I nerded out for a second. So <laughs> you're in your element, and I, I do that. And so I'm like, oh wait, let me let me make sure, because again, we get to this point where we mastered something, right? We we got to make sure that when our when other people they're like we're we're able to break it down. And so I I I don't I don't do that, and so I have to go back. So I definitely just wanted to give that disclaimer. So you're good. No, keep going, keep it coming. Um, <laughs> because we need to get to that level of understanding. So we don't wanna water it down way too much. So you're you're definitely right on the ball. Um, so I do have a, a, another question for you. Um, what is the most important thing, if there's a most important thing, what is the most important thing about project management? Um, the most important thing about project management, and this is all, you know, just personal preference. To me, I'm all about outcomes and the results. Um, so to me, a project, the most important thing is, did you achieve what you were trying to accomplish? That's important. 
that's a little, little bit, a little yeah. important. <laughs> um, and then also the, I would say right underneath that is, you know, what did you learn from it? Yeah. Um, no, 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 go, go ahead. I'll, I'll add my point in a second. Go ahead. Oh, yes. The learning, even if you failed and you didn't achieve what you were trying to accomplish, but from that point, what did you learn? Um, what were the things that you could have done better? Did you need uh, more resources? Did, you know, your goal kind of aligned to um, all your sub objectives? So things, things like that, your, you know, your, your lessons learned is, you know, right up there as well. I, I, you, again, you hit it. You hit it on the head. Um, this is why I bring the experts, y'all, because they, they, again, they're they're speaking to exactly what we need. You mentioned outcomes. You mentioned results. Um, but where I even was like, yes, what did you learn? Um, one of the one of the main things, um, or one of the key elements that I that I make sure to teach my clients and students um, is to analyze and measure their results. Again, probably when I first started doing that. I wasn't thinking that that was part of project management, but it is, and it's key and it's essential. Again, in my space of the partnerships, it's super essential that if we are accepting um, funds from a sponsor, that we need to make sure that we're meeting our goals, we're meeting the outcomes, um, or we're achieving those outcomes. And so, I just want to take a second and and have us talk about those outcomes for a second. That comes in the results now. It, it, it may with summer, you guys both can, you know, you ladies can both chime in on this. When we're setting the, the, the mission, right, we have our original mission of our organization. And then when we're talking about the specific projects, again, for us, we have the conference, which is WeACon, but then we also have one of our initiatives where we work with um, incarcerated women and girls focusing on personal and professional development prior to them being released from prison or juvenile detention. So for us, the specific projects that, that we are focusing on, what is our end goal? We don't want to just get the workbook and do the training, right? Like that's, that's not even, well, that's part of the project, but that's not the end goal. Our goal is to see an increase in X, a decrease in this, a gain in this. Um, and so as you all are making sure that you are clearly um, defining or outlining what it is that you want your outcomes to be, be clear on that. Where do you, um, the, the, whatever impact you are making um, through your organization, be, be clear in where there should be an increase um, as well as in any ways that they should, you should be seeing improvement from the people that you're serving. And then the other piece, and again, ladies, go ahead and chime in. When you're measuring those results, what are the, some of the most important things to look at when you're measuring those results, right? Again, we have what we want to do, but how are we, are we able to measure the results and then incorporate that through project management as we continue to grow? Sorry, my son. No, you're good, <laughs> One second. No, you're good. What did you want? <laughs> She's not on mute, but I'll answer that. Um, so in, in the corporate space, what we do is we take a look. Um, we, we really do look at the end result. It's not that we don't care on how you get there. Um, that's, that's your choice. That's what you do as an organization. You hire your agilist or you hire, because I mean, I, I don't do my own project management uh, for my for my own personal uh, business, but we do know that project management is in there and we'll have experts come in and speak with us and trying to keep us on track. So as a corporation, when we look at what, what you're providing us, so you presented us this, this amazing pamphlet or this book or this training session, you told us this is what we're going to do and this is what we can do for you. Therefore, you are solving a problem for a business, the business's problem has to deal with the community, right? So if you're solving that problem that the business needs, you might be also solving the community's needs, but you're solving the problem of the people who write the check. And that's the problem that you want to solve, just kind of what Margo was touching on before. So you do not get offended if someone says, stop solving problems for broke people. They have problems, but their problems are also larger corporations' problems as well. So you want to solve the problems of those who are writing the check if you want to continue to run as a business. Now, for the, the project that you're working on or whatever you promised this corporation or organization saying that I'm going to do X, Y, Z. The end result better be X, Y, Z because they don't do things in, in, in groups, okay? So I'm not gonna give you funding for from the years 2020 all the way to 2025. No, we're gonna do incremental 
you know, giving. So if you don't do what you told you me you were going to do in 2019, you're not going to get a check for 2020. That's basically as simple as that. I can find another company who might promise me less, but give me what they told me they were going to do. It, it all, again, has to do with relationships and understanding where you are. So your focus needs to be staying on track and getting that done. My focus needs to be, are these end results what I need? And do they match what you told me in the beginning? And if they're not, let's, let's revisit it. Let, let's take a look. Let's see what else we can do. And there's never a problem saying, let's expound on this and see what else you know this, this program can do for us. But there is a problem if you fall short of whatever your promise is. So I don't know, Mala, if you want to mention, or, or Margo, if you want to mention anything on that. Oh, yes. I would touch on that. You hit the nail on the head with that. Um, as far as, you know, especially from your perspective, because people want to know how, you know, they can solicit funding and then also how they can retain that relationship. So I think that's very imperative. Um, another thing to look at is your key performance indicators. Um, what are, and I would say, and let me kind of expand on that. Um, your key performance indicator are things that'll help you kind of determine where you're at. So I'll just say, if you're losing weight, um, going on a, and you know, you're trying to lose weight, you put together, this plan and you're trying to determine if you're losing the weight, you're going to get on the scale. That the scale is your key performance indicator that you're either losing weight, you're either or you're staying where you're at or you're gaining weight um, is the best example that I can use as far as a key performance indicator. So those things, writing down what your key performance indicators are and then going back to, see, to check if you are actually going headed in the right direction um, is very imperative. And to both of their points, the one thing that I would also add um, is that it's your responsibility to be transparent, especially with your sponsors. I guess somewhere, I think we're gonna have to tell this story every single time. Um, your girl was a hot mess when I even went to summer and, and hear, hear, hear me out because it, it is a funny story. Um, I wasn't a complete hot mess. I was hot mess, but not, not all the way hot mess. Um, but no, the, the, the reality of that is um, there were so many gaps in, in what, where I was at that particular time because we're growing, right? There's, there's a process that we're growing. And for those of you who are familiar with the, the part of my story, with the Women in Action Conference, um, our year one was 2017, and it was completely self-funded. Um, never again. I, I, never again. And so I, I, after the experience, it was great. And, and I said, you know, we want to make a larger impact, but I'm not, and I can't do this by myself. So what does that look like? That's when I was like, okay, partnership, funding, you know, raising capital, what does that look like, right? And so I started casting my net to people that I knew, um, getting to know other, other individuals. And so for our second conference in 2018, we put so many different things together. We were, I promise you, we were following a project plan, but what ended up happening is we didn't put out contracts to some of those partners or to the, some of the sponsors. And we ended up losing $40,000 in sponsorships. For those of you who have projects and are, are operating by an operating budget, you know what that can do, right? And so I was, I was completely devastated. And gratefully, we had, I, I had a um, fairy godmother who helped us recoup 32,000 of that, you know, of, of, of what we needed but it shouldn't have happened, right? It, sh it should not have happened. And it was my responsibility to figure out, number one, what were those lessons learned? What went wrong and how to make sure that we're never going to do this again. And so of course, we knew that the, the conference made impact and was gonna continue to make impact. So even the first thing that we did, um, I think it was two or three days after that conference, we called the team together. We said, this is what never was going to happen. It, we put some, some very, um, very clear um, indicators, key performance indicators together um, on what was going to happen for the following year. And the first thing that we did was we went to funding because we knew what the budget was going to be, right? So um, what, what, why I'm sharing this particular story is when we got to this point of, okay, we were still a little short and we need to make this goal, 
I just started being transparent with not only the sponsors that we that we had already secured or acquired, but other people who just wanted to know what it is that we were doing. And so when Summer and I sat down, I shared with her like, hey, this is where I was. And at that time, we, we hadn't secured Comerica as a sponsor, but because I was willing to be transparent, that was a, a clear indicator that not only was I willing to do the work as the founder, but it also gave Summer or Comerica that insight of there's room for this, this organization to grow and I wanna make that impact. And so if you could share a little bit about that too, um, I want you to chime in, but I, I, I also want to wrap up that my point by sharing that when you're clear on the goals from the very beginning and as long as you continue to be transparent with where you are along your process with your partners with your sponsors and this is regardless of whether they're they're you know providing the funding as a physical check or if there's in kind donations make sure that you are are aware that it's okay if things aren't going the way you wanted them to go or saw them going. So just be clear and, and be willing to be transparent on what it is because your sponsors have done this before, especially the ones that were in corporate, they've done this before and they likely have additional resources to get you back in alignment or to, to your goal or even superseding, you know, superseding your goal. So Summer, if you, if you have anything to add to that point, please. Yeah, um, you're right. Uh, as a as a corporate sponsor, we do look and we're always looking for organizations that fit our model or something that kind of is different than another organization. But when we met the first time, um, you were so excited and so determined about your goal. Like I knew what your end result was, no matter how you were going to get there, I knew what it was going to be. Um, and the second time I, I met with you, same thing. So if I hear consistency, I know what your end result is and part parts of it line up, parts of it might not. But if, if you, as a corporation, you're not our only organization. So not talking to Margo, but just period, like this is what we do. Therefore we have hundreds of organizations that we work with. So we understand if things don't go, like Margo said, you wanna be transparent, not so transparent that you turn off the org <laughs> the corporation who helps you, but right. you want to be transparent enough to say, hey, I know this is what we promised. We're not quite there yet. We're going to get to the, that point in the next two months. Or do you have any programs? Or is there is there some way we can collaborate to make sure that this, this gets to the point where you are comfortable and you know that this is the product that you want at the end result? So you have to be able to bend um, as a part of leadership. So if you're leading your organization, you're a founder, you're a leader, you have to be a servant first. Yes. So when that with that mindset, you're able able to kind of set things up to make sure things are done. This will make you look good. This will make your corporation look good. This will make your organization look good. This will make the people that you're serving look good. So just, just have that kind of at the forefront of, of where you're wanting to go. But again, make sure you're on track and Margo stayed on track. She did. And, and I liked that. I don't give an okay from the very first time that I meet with people, because I want to see if that excitement, if that, 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 that passion continues to the next time I talk to you. If you switch up and say, oh yeah, I'm so determined to talk to the young adults today and I can't wait to get pound of the pavement. We're gonna talk to them. We're gonna, we're gonna make sure that they're financially equipped and financially well and financially sound. And the next time I talk to you, you're talking about dogs and pets. I don't think this is aligned. It's like, thank you, but no, thank you. I mean, I'm going to be kind, but I'm not going to give you any money. So you want to make sure that you, you, your passion continues to stay. Your mission is embedded in you. can repeat it with looking at it, without looking at it, you know what it is you want to do. And again, that's staying on track. That's making sure your goals are in line. That's just making sure that you are who you say you are. Yeah. So the authentic part of who you are. And, and again, if, when Ma was talking about doing project management, I understand that's not everyone's forte and it certainly isn't mine. I mean, I can barely keep my outlook organized. So <laughs> if you're trying to tell me that I need to organize something else. It's a lot harder. So I'm just like, you know what we did our organization. Uh, we didn't have the funding to pay a project manager to come in and run it. So we are hiring an intern project manager. They need a resume built because they need to reach be an agile or master scrum, whatever it is 
you know, it's not my area, but you know what I'm talking about, Mama. (laughs) I said, you you can do all that. And I don't pay anything. They're like, no, nothing. I just need to make sure I have it on my resume that I that I did this and put in these hours. Like done and done. So those relationships, building the relationships with the people that can help you, though that's in kind. They're there's trading time for for basically um, in a way to to move up in their own field. They're helping me and I'm helping them. So they don't realize that they're probably helping me more. But <laughs> a win win more type situation sometimes is what takes place. But uh, yeah, I don't know, Mala, if you have anything to, to mention on that or if there's another question that might be out there. Man, um, you know, I actually have a question for you, Summer, um, I, you know, Margaret, but I'm just curious. So how, how well should someone have something put together for you when they're soliciting funding? As far as like the project, should, do you want to see the project plan up front or you're just more so like what's the mission, the outcome and how you're expected to get there? That's a really good question. Actually, that's a, that's a fantastic question. A lot of people don't ask me that. They just kind of come to me where they are. So I've seen areas, I've seen people talk to me in the very beginning stages and I have to tell them, hey, uh, do you have a website? They're like, no, not yet. We're working on that. Do you have social media? No, not yet. We're working on that. Do you have anywhere that I can confirm that you're saying that you're going to do what you're telling me you're going to do? No, go back to the drawing board and come back to me when that's finished. So I have had people come to me with those things. And I try to tell people, you're not talking to summer. You're not, you're talking to a $75 billion bank. So act like you're talking to a $75 billion bank, because this isn't my money. This is the bank's money. So if it was my money, I, I probably wouldn't have the same, you know, expectations, but because we, if I do anything wrong and give to the wrong organization, we, our name is on that. So that's a PR nightmare. So I need it to be as, as complete as possible. I understand you're not going to have everything put together, but you should have a business. You know, it shouldn't be something that is not at least established. If I go into Arizona corporate um, not corporate communication, sorry, uh, corporate commissions, and I don't see your name, I don't see it approved, I don't see it in good status, then we cannot do business unless you are an actual business. So that's kind of like the first steps. Now, if you have your business, you have a website, you have your social media or whatever platform you're working on, and you've done things before, then then bring whatever you have to me. You don't have to be, have your whole program and camera list so and everything done. The first but it just okay. needs to be at least an idea, you know, it has to be kind of there, but you still have to be a business. Just like Margo was saying, you're a business first, and then you can be considered a nonprofit, but I still need you to act and run like a business. And then we can do something in the future because I, I look at the long term. I want to see it last. We want to see, like, I'm not going to work with you just because it's 2020. I want to work with someone that I plan on working with them again in 2021, 2022, so we can build on that relationship. Um, so to answer your question, my preference is have a program, have it set, have your training modules, have everything so I can just look at it and your bio, your headshot, have everything professional. Uh, so there's a clear, concise answer of what your plan is and what your goals are so that I know how to relay this information because I have to talk to it and I'm not just talking to it to Cool America Bank, I'm talking to the government. So uh, it's, it's it has to be legitimate. <laughs> yes, yes, that's awesome. The only reason why I asked that question is because those are the kind of questions that you need to ask when you're putting together a project. And so that you know what direction you need to head instead of making a guess or assumptions. And that's why I kind of wanted to ask that question. So that's a project soliciting funding for, for corporations is a project. And you kind of have to understand your like what their objective is so that you know the necessary steps to take to achieve your final outcome so that's all i wanted to say (laughs) no that's perfect because a lot of people do have that question and they think that it's okay you know they're gonna meet me where i'm at and they don't like me then no you can't have an attitude when you you are asking for things i mean if you want to do good you have to you have to be uh as established as you can be do as much as you can i know it's hard work I know it's a lot, um, but it's worth it in the end, certainly. Definitely. In two points, you know, to, to Summer's point, and then um, Mayo's follow-up question, it's it's really key that you understand that when you're, you're when you're bringing whatever to the table, right? Like 
again, Summer just mentioned that it's like, I, I may not have had every single thing together yet, right? Because you had to get to the goal. I mean, at that time, what we were six, still six, um, close to eight months away from the conference, but we were close enough to where it was like, no, these things should be in place and, and we need to get it together. Um, it is on you. I've said that before today it's on you because you are the founder um and we also talked about being clear on what are your goals what are the outcomes and for me so i'll, I'll respond to to summer's points from my perspective and what i make sure that not only do i do but any of my clients any of my students because their goal their end goal their outcome is to acquire partnerships for their organizations and so one of the main things that i make sure that do that they do is identify what is the outcome and it's not just here, my mission is to, to uh, make sure all the little girls in the world are overcoming identity issues. That's great, but that's not the outcome. That is your mission. That's what you want to do. That's what you're you're striving to do. You, again, we talked a little bit about this and so where you see the increases and the, de and the decreases and we're bringing that to the table um, in, the com in that particular conversation. That's great. But diving deeper is for that specific project that you're working on, um, you need to make sure that at any point you are doing what needs to be done prior to um, taking the, these, the, the challenges that you're facing to your sponsors. And so when Summer made that point of, you know, don't share everything because, you know, you can end up turning off that sponsor. So be like, let's be clear on that. That's, you know, that's what I wanted to make sure that that we came back to is understanding that it that you are the one who's responsible for achieving the goals you're telling your, you know, you told your sponsor or your partner that you're going to achieve. And there's additional ways to do that. And one of the main things that I teach is figuring out how you can begin to leverage your professional assets. That's your network. That's the people that you're connected to already. And if you don't know a project manager, then reach out and try and find one, tap your existing network. And if you're as bold as me and many of the people that I know specifically on, on, on this training session today, go ahead and post to social media and say, hey, I'm looking for a project manager who specializes in, or shoot, if you don't know what y'all need to do, then just say, I'm looking for a project manager. So that's one piece, hear me out, You know, follow me with this. So you get, what's gonna happen is you are, especially if you're posting on Facebook, you're gonna get everybody's and their mama's comment, you know, commenting, oh, here's my person, here's my person. Now here's the next thing you wanna make sure that you're doing. Do the research to identify what aspect of project management you need help with. Again, putting myself on the chopping block. When I needed a marketer, I had no clue what I was doing back in the day. And I was like, hey, I need help with marketing. And someone was like, okay, what do you need help with? And I'm like, marketing. What are you talking about? Marketing. And they were like, do you need help with um, conversion or awareness? And I'm like, marketing. I didn't know, like I had no clue what the difference was. I'm like, I, I need help with marketing. Like there's this word, the definition of marketing is this, this is what I need help with it goes beyond uh, like knowing the definition of what it is. And, and at that time, I had no clue that awareness and conversion and all the other components of marketing were a thing, were, were, in, you know, were different. And again, people specialize in awareness, people specialize in conversion, people specialize in co copy and, and, and advertising. And then that whole conversation where advertising is a little bit different than marketing. And I share this because the same is true for project management. The same is true for my project management. And so before you reach out to someone, you have to know what it is that you need help with. So again, go to Google University, go to YouTube University and, and just get some, some, some entry level, some, some foundational knowledge of project management to where you are able to have this conversation. Okay, maybe this is where I need help. I, I'm not quite sure. I, I don't have my standard operating procedures together. You need to be able to have that, at least that level of conversation with them. Because here's the thing, you're going to pay or get an intern, but you're going to pay them for their time. And in order for them to do the job the right way, regardless of whether it's, it's a paid or unpaid um, uh, representative, you need to know that they're doing what it is that you need done. And so if you can't have that conversation with them from a fundamental level, it will not get done the right way. 
And again, founders, this is our, our responsibility to make sure that even the people that we're bringing on are going to be able to master what it is. And I wanna just um, take, take this time to also mention, um, make sure that you're not hiring or bringing people on your team just because you don't want to do the to do, don't want to do the job like that is something that's super super essential now if you don't know it you still again have to figure it out and then bring the people on to make sure they're doing it the right way but don't simply just set out to hire somebody simply because you don't want to do it that is a that is that that will lead you on the track of of not meeting your goals and maybe even disaster because um again you need to have a clear understanding of what is needed in that space and as the founder you have to be the first one um to really pound the pavement to figure those things out okay so i wanted to make sure that we talk about that too so thank you thank you thank you for both of those points um i do have another question for you maywa when it comes to um to your your team when it comes to your team in regards to project management what are what is most effective when it comes to delegating those tasks um the most important part of delegating tasks is to kind of understand your team as a unit and who does what who specializes in what um mm. that's the most important thing as far as delegation, because if you're going to tell the person who's taking the meeting notes, oh, I need you to work on the communication plan, they're not going to be able to achieve that because that's not what they specialize in. You're going to ask the person who specializes in the communication plan, or if you need a business proposal drafted, you're going to work with the person who knows how to do that. So it's just kind of identifying people's skill sets, knowing where they're at, knowing what they actually like to do um, will help you determine the steps you need to take in starting to assign work or tasks. I think that's super, super essential. Um, and, and again, we can all chime in on this conversation this summer. You, you manage not just your team, but you manage several others. Um, so for, for both of you, what are some of the, the largest challenges that people should anticipate when it comes to beginning um, when it comes to beginning to delegate what are some of the challenges that that we can share with them to begin to anticipate um when they're beginning to delegate those tasks i would say it's internal you know a lot of the things <laughs> it starts with you first <laughs> before yeah. it's anyone else and some some of the things you kind of it's hard to let go or even trust someone to do it. So you have to have a team that you trust and es establishing that relationship and trust within your team first is very imperative. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, the trust is there. You have to make sure that your team can handle and do it the way it might not be the way you want it to be done, but at least their goal is the same as yours. So the end result should be the same. How they get there, that is going to be left to the person who's handling it. And you have to be comfortable with allowing that to happen. But a lot of times, like um, our our chief community uh, officer lets us know, he says, just says, have the end in mind, start from the end and then go that way. And as long as everyone begins with the end in mind, then we will at least find our way to the end, you know, by the time, because every market does something different, to be honest, for in my position, we have, we have Florida, we have California, Texas, Michigan, we all do something different because our, our markets are completely different than one another. But what is our goal? We all are reaching the same Comerica goal, but it's done differently and it's, it's, uh, we're all getting there differently. And some of us have different experiences that allow us to do certain things within our market that others can't. Like I'm a 38 year old mother of two, you know, I've owned businesses. I, you know, I, I love Arizona. There's some people that might be younger than me that never owned a business. They came straight from like um, different organizations. They weren't in banking. They don't have finance in their background. So I'm going to go heavy on finance. I'm going to go heavy on business ownership. I'm going to go heavy on entrepreneurship where they might go heavy on students and getting them, you know, adjusted in adulting 101, because that's kind of, they just left that area. But the main goal was financial education and empowerment and making sure economic development is there. So, um, just understand that the goal, make sure that's the same. And then how it's, how it is achieved is entirely up to the person that you delegate this information to. I wanted them to say, cause you guys are probably tired of me saying it's on you. 
<laughs> I just wanted them to say it. But yes, no, you, you again, it, it's it's right there. And in and, and I feel like I feel like the, the, the important piece of of project management that it comes down to the leader. I, I, and I and I guess I feel like I'm realizing that as we're having this conversation, as everything is coming that you that you're mentioning, may well summer, um, even myself, like everything that we're mentioning is coming back to the visionary, to the individual who is in charge of everything, right? And so um, one of the make one of the main things that I talk about when it comes to delegation is make sure that you like the people that you're working with. The super, super essential. Um, because it's 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 not just that you that you like them, it's really that you can have a healthy working relationship with them. Um, there's people that may not be my favorite people, but we gel together when it's focused on reaching a goal. Mm -hmm. We may not be sipping mojitos together on girls' night, but nonetheless that person will get the job done and that person I can trust to achieve the vision that's closely aligned with mine. And so again, there, there's times where you, you know, you really want to pay close attention um, to that when it comes to delegating. And I, uh, Summer, when you mentioned um, that, you, that, you, that you have an intern, I also want to talk about that for a second. Um, when you're delegating these tasks, you don't always have to hire them onto your team. What you know that they, so they're an actual employee. You can um, do the um, the independent contractors. You can do freelancers, which again fall under that same line. But you, you again, you don't have to just hire these people onto your organization, especially if you don't have the funding. Um, and so there, there's uh, two points that I preferably I remember to to make sure to hit them um, both. But one point of this when we're talking about um, the the uh, the securing the funding is part of a project, right? There's the whole master project, and then you have these uh, other tasks. One of the main projects when it comes to the funding is that that I want you to make sure that you're looking at is generating or raising or acquiring enough for your entire budget for your team. And it's super essential that you make sure that, that you're doing that um, ahead of time. Um, because people need to get paid, not not just the the other people who you're hiring, but you, mm -hmm. right? We talked about running your business like a business. You need to be profiting off of your organization and the work that you are doing. And yes, as a nonprofit, you can pay yourself a salary, and we can have an additional conversation about what that looks like. <laughs> the other piece to that is. Um, um, going back to a point that we mentioned about the mutual benefit exchange, when you're bringing people onto your team, what do you do well that you have identified where their gaps, right? Um, Summer mentioned that her intern is probably helping her more than she's helping her intern, but that's relative, right? That that intern needs the re, the, the the skills and the experience that she's going to be get he or she. I'm over here being stereotypical that they are getting from working with um, Summer's team. And if you don't know anything about feed, go ahead and take some time to to. I'll make sure that Summer drops that information because the the team Summer and her three brothers who are the the co-founders of feed. They are, we're talking about social media gurus, professional speaker, we're talking about lawyers, and then Summer and everything that she brings together um, or brings for from the financial um, financial education background. You see what I'm saying? And so when it comes to the, collab the opportunity to collaborate with other people, you are an expert in whatever it is that you do. Don't think that just because you're asking for help, that, that you don't have any value to provide. And so one of the ways that I look at that, and one of the things that I make sure to teach is that we need to stop looking at things as we are asking for handouts and that we begin to give hand ups. If you've mastered something, if you have a, a skill that you've been working on for years and you've been refining, whether it's one variable at a time or you've had to completely pivot from what it is that you were doing before, communicate that and don't be embarrassed don't feel bad or ashamed of of getting into your element again for those of you who know me and for those of you who don't know didn't know me before i was navigating a space of personal development and i was dang good at it and even when i transitioned out of it people kept trying to pull me back in and i was like no i can't i can't because i i i don't want to say i outgrew it 
but I was, I, I had grown into a different space and that space was professional development. And it centered around helping individuals establish and retain partnerships. And I do that just as well as I did the partnerships, or sorry, the personal development. And, and so what I'm the, the point that I'm making here is as you grow, make sure that you're that that you are communicating with people um, what it is that you do and what it is that you can provide to them as well as you're trying to bring people to your team. Okay. Super essential. Super essential. So I want to make sure I want to see if we have um, additional questions at any point. Again, if you have some additional questions, go ahead and drop those there. Um, I wanted to circle back. We did get a question on Facebook. Um, to me, if you're still there, I want to make sure that we answer that question. So somebody asked, um, is there any information on becoming a certified project manager? Can you talk yes. a little bit about that? Yes, there is definitely a lot of information on the internet. Um, I would start with the PMP, the PMP group. Um, they're the ones that hand out the certifications. They kind of tell you the what you need, education, background skills, hours you need. Um, PDUs is what they call it, like the learning piece of it um, in order to get um, the project management certificate certification. And there's so many different certifications that they have. They have the one that's for people that are just starting off. It's the CAMPM. Um, and that's for anyone that's kind of starting off, they don't want to take the full blown PMP test. Um, and those certifications go a long way as well. You can, um, if you have that certification, you're most likely uh, to get hired on quicker than someone who has a master's um, because you specialize and you know um, that particular area in space. Um, so I would just say, go there first. Um, there's a lot of different free resources and they give you they basically break down everything for you um, in order to kind of understand what you need to do um, to get certified. Super essential. Go ahead, Summer. Go ahead. I was going to ask. So, Mama, can you say what the costs are associated with that? Um, when I got certified, it was paid through the VA, so I don't remember. Okay. Um, I would say I will say they are pricey. <laughs> um, some some of these certifications are like three thousand dollars, and some of them as much as three hundred. So uh, roughly around that range, depending on which certification you're trying to obtain. Okay. Yep. And does anybody know? Because I have heard that um, if you have if you work for a corporation, let's say they already pay for your schooling, is it mm -hmm. a possibility that they pay for your certifications as well? Some corporations do. Um, and some, you can actually negotiate that with your offer. I know I did. Um, I was able to negotiate, do you guys have a learning and development um, allotment or allowance? Um, and what they do is around October, they start to gather, okay, like you need to start thinking in the future for 2021, for example, um, they'll ask us in 2020 of October, what goals are you trying to obtain what certifications learnings groups you're trying to you know like networking groups you're trying to be a part of are there fees associated to it you kind of put together your little plan and the how much it all cost and you can actually negotiate that in your offer i'm so glad you mentioned that because negotiation almost everything is negotiable and if you can't get that dollar say if you say you know i want a 10 percent raise they're like we sorry we can't give you that we can give you five percent okay so I'll take the 5%, but I also want this. So additional yeah. training. And that just looks good for the corporation that you work for to show that they're offering these trainings and they're paying for it. So sometimes, most of the time, the training will outweigh that salary bump as well. So yeah, that's one definitely. Yeah. And thank you for, for bringing up that point because I always make sure. I, so my, my world is the nonprofit space and service providers, nonprofit as well as for, but I want to always bring this conversation up because we're talking also to the corporate leaders. Because again, what the, what it looks like is being able to partner and and and, and establish collab different forms of collaboration with other individuals, and so for those corporate uh, professionals who are out there, I, I am I'm sure you were, but please make sure you're taking note of that as well, simply because what this looks like when it comes to what you are managing and in, in the corporate world, it's honestly no different because you are fulfilling and working toward achieving 
the vision of your founder, the, the CEO of your company or the company that you work for. And so, you know, some people are not fit for entrepreneurship, just like I am not cut for the corporate world. And you learn that and you know that. So don't think that any of our, you know, the conversations that we're having, um, whether it's today or the previous conversations that we're just saying, go ahead and jump into entrepreneurship. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because you may be that missing piece for us in the entrepreneurial world that we need in the corporate space. And so I love talking with um, my, my associates who are ERG leads, um, uh, employee resource group leads, because there's ways that we can collaborate and they get just as much from our professional development experiences with Discover Her that our entrepreneurs do because they're navigating a different space than ours. And so they like us finding ways to establish new relationships um, with entrepreneurs and things of that nature. So I also wanted to bring um, up that point. So I, to, 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 to transition back to a point that we mentioned, um, because I was like, do not forget this conversation. Do not forget this question. And your girl almost forgot, so I had to message you. Mm -hmm. Corrective action plans. Yes. Corrective action plans. Let's talk about, first and foremost, what are they? And then before you say like what, you know, how we can begin to implement them, I, I have a quick story, but I want you to tell us like, what are corrective action plans? So before I even dive into what a corrective action plan is, is when people hear that, they think negatively, right? Yes. Because a lot yes. of the times, you know, like if you're getting a corrective action plan, your, your boss is saying, hey, you know, you're not doing this well. And these are the things that you need to do um, in order to improve. Otherwise, we're going to put you on a performance action plan. Yes. So I want to say that not all corrective action plans are negative. Some They're, they're very beneficial to your organization. Um, even, you know, I do it at home, you know, with what can I do better as a mom or, you know, as a human being. So a corrective action plan is basically a plan that you put in place to perform action. So whatever that is, um, you know, you want to uh, improve your sales goals, um, you, put, you can put a corrective action plan together um, in place for that. So a corrective action plan you can actually utilize for anything to improve to improve and exp expand on anything. So I just wanted to put that out there um, and that it's not negative at all, um, but it can be viewed negatively. Yep. And I think it's super important that we begin to understand that again, as founders, um, as the visionaries, I was one who was writing myself some pink slips because I wasn't showing up in the way I know I needed to. And so for you, if you haven't written yourself a pink slip, mm, let's be honest, no. But I want you to understand that as we begin to have this conversation around corrective action plans, the goal for us, for you, is to improve, is to be better, is to do better, is to continue to make your impact in a way where you have a full and complete understanding of all of the components that a business, a corporate business has already established and is running before they bring in other people and in order for them to make the impact they're setting out to do. So again, as we're bringing you these trainings, as we're bringing you these conversations and all of the other intricate details that are wrapped up in the conversations we're having, it's, it's, it's up to you to not, not, not just take uh, what we're saying and, and just go and implement it, which you can do from what we're talking about, but continue to do the research, continue to add to what it is that we're talking about right now. And so go ahead, Maywa, like, what, what, how do we begin to put together those corrective action plans? I'm sure that there's templates that are out there, right? But what, how are we able to, to, what do we need to look at within our own organizations to put together um, effective corrective action plans? So the project manager and me, I know you said before I execute on the, you know, on how to, you had a story. So I don't know if you shared the story or not, uh, or if you want me to go ahead and dive into how to begin to implement a corrective action plan. I just wanna make sure that 
I wanted to follow suit in how you wanted it. No, to. You're, no, okay. you're good. You're good. So <laughs> okay. Yeah, of, of me not not having my stuff together, and, and that 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 essentially was the point. So you're good. Okay. Good. Good. <laughs> so Thank you. See, that's why you need project manager. <laughs> so you get. Yes, yes. A corrective action plan. Um, I would say um, I'm going to bring up SOP, um, your standard operating procedures. Um, you can put together your standard, uh, standard operating procedures and kind of look at where the gaps are um, and see if you can improve efficiency amongst your organization or amongst your team or amongst yourself. Um, and that's kind of where I start to kind of look for things to put together for my corrective action log um, and then kind of prioritize there. Um, and then a corrective action log is things that I've listed that I feel that we can improve on. And then from there, I prioritize, OK, which one is going to create value? Which one um, can we implement relatively easy? Um, and then go from there. And so from there, I decide, OK, there's three things that I can work on or I like to work on. and that's when I'll put together the corrective action plan. Um, so there's a preparation piece and then kind of even determining what you would like to work on first in order to even put together a corrective action plan. Because if you don't have anything to correct, then there's no point of the plan, right? Um, so there's that preparation piece, kind of researching, determining um, what you need to correct. And then I'll use an example. Um, we want to improve sales by 10%, right? So you kind of put together your goal of what you're trying to accomplish, yep. what the problem is, um, where the gap is, or some of the things that you might think might be the issue as to why we're not, our sales are not increasing, um, and then begin to do the research. But that's the plan, you know, putting the plan together, the uh, corrective action plan is just putting the goal what the pro your problem statement, um, your goal, and then little things, um, little small supporting details as to why um, you feel you're not um, where there's a gap in sales. Um, and that's why I'm using that example because we all want to improve and make more that's money, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's the goal. <laughs> Absolutely. So that I would say is the first thing that you need to look at is to kind of basically prioritize what you think you need to correct and what has the most impact at first. Um, and that's where you go in on um, putting together the plan. Um, and there's plenty of templates. They're very easy to follow. <laughs> um, the hardest part is just determining um, what you're trying, what you want to correct. Absolutely. And you, again, you pointed out that the corrective action plans um, help you further reach your goal, your end destination. Again, for, for some of you, it's going to be making the impact and increase in this, decrease in that, right? For some of you, it's that. But the other side, it's also making sure that you are generating the the, the revenue in which you need. Um, and one of the one of the things that I was recently having a conversation about was you can bring in revenue, but what are your profit margins? We need to have that, you know, we need to have that conversation and, and these, um, the corrective action plans are a way to make sure that if you aren't reaching that goal or those goals that you are like pivoting certain variables at a, one at a time, right? Because you don't want to change everything because you won't know what, you know, what didn't work if you're changing everything at once, right? So you want to start just, okay, nope, that didn't work research, do the, you know, take action and then continue to come back and just continue to measure um, what it is that you're, the, the results in which you're seeing. And again, understand that this is a process, right? You're not going to do it right the first time. You're always going to continue to refine um, until you find what works. And then you just continue in that sweet spot. But then a pandemic hits and then you figure out what works there, right? And so again, regardless of where you are on your journey. I want you to take away, I wanna be sure that you're, you're, what you're taking away from this conversation is that this is just the beginning. You are exactly where you need to be right now, but because you were here, because you were tuning in and receiving this information, we are calling you to take purposeful and intentional action. 
starting today. I'm sure you've gotten a, a, a number of notes and you've written some things down to, I gotta go research this, I gotta, I gotta go look this up too, yes. And you have Maywa here, you have Summer, and as always, you have me who are sitting here in your corner and we're rooting for you. So if at any point you have questions, go ahead and reach out to us directly. Um, we're going to make sure um, that each of you who were registered and came are going to get a follow-up with, um, Maywa, because she does this work, not just for Allstate, she does this with other businesses. So if you need a consultation, you will be able to connect with Maywa. Um, but in the meantime, go ahead and connect with, with her, M-A-W-A-K-E-I-T-A -A on LinkedIn. And you can go ahead and connect with her there. Um, just shoot her a DM and then we'll go ahead and make sure that she gets you over um, her calendar so you can get some details from her. But I want to know, we're going to take some time. We have about 10 minutes left for today's segment. We're going to open it up. If you have any questions or comments um, about today's segment, like we want to hear from you. So go ahead, for those of you who are on Facebook, because I can't see it right now, go ahead and post in the comment section. What was your major takeaway? What is something that you learned that you didn't know? Um, was this conversation helpful with where you are right now? I see a yes in the comment chat here with us. So clearly someone took something away. So go ahead. Um, you can pop yourself off mute for those of you who are here I'll keep tapping until I see someone pop themselves off mute but what was your major takeaway how was this conversation for you what did you learn we'll give a couple seconds for that I just have to start off by saying thank you thank you thank you because when you don't know you don't know and now that information is being given to you it's very helpful because a lot of people hide and protect information instead of sharing information that could be beneficial to everyone because it's not just about one individual. It takes a village to really grow the community. And by having this information, it helps us grow. And I, I just have to say thank you because it is really helping us really take a look at um, everything within our organization. Are we doing the right things? Do we need to pull back a little bit? Do we need to revamp? We've been in the business for a very long time. And a lot of the things you guys have said and hit on, we don't do. So now we're having to slow it back and go, okay, where did we go wrong? And we need to fix this. So thank you. This is very beneficial. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear it, Kim. And then also just to, you know, like you said, something about revamping. If you're trying to transform or grow, um, just when you're starting to put your plan and action together, start to think, do you have the tools or resources necessary to expand? And if you don't, what do you need to do to get there before you even start um, implementing um, a plan. You need to kind of fully understand where you're at and do you have the resources in order to grow at the moment so that you won't kind of like fail or be overwhelmed. So just wanted to point that out there. I want to add something to that. Um, people say, it, you, or you mentioned, if you have the resource, um, if, you know, whether you have the resources, if you don't have them, figure out how to get them. Figure out how to get them because there's always a way. There is always a way. And whether that's mutual benefit exchange, bartering, there, there's a way. So definitely take that time to figure, to figure it out and be willing to ask the questions. Sharika, we hear you. Go ahead. How are you? I'm great. How are you, all you ladies this lovely almost afternoon? We are so well. <laughs> so I just want to, um, it's more so like, I, what you're saying is all valid and it's pretty funny to me because now, you know, I've been in my nonprofit for 12 years as well as a full-time job. Um, and so I've had to learn to let other people do it. And so it's funny because I was in a conversation with my volunteer coordinator and she's like, oh yeah, that email you sent me, da, da, da. I was like, I what? I was like, I didn't read it. I just forwarded it to you because if I read it, that means I'm going to do something with it and I don't want to be doing anything with all volunteer stuff. So for me, it's been a big adjustment not to do it all myself. And so when she's talking to me about it, I was like, yeah, I don't know. I was like, so it was a win for me not to know what she was talking about because normally I'm in everything. Yeah. And so because we have our big event coming up and so it is a project, you know, it's, 
it's managing going into the virtual space and all of that. And so now finally giving out. And so as I was sitting here today, I was like, oh, I need to do a survey for the parents after the event is over. Oh, wait, I'm going to email somebody else to do that. To do so it. Yes. it is a serious task for me to delegate, but I'm doing it. I'm getting there. <laughs> Congratulations. We are super proud of you and excited for that. That's so good. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us today too. No problem. Thank you. And just to expand on that, Sharika, um, I would say, you know, get with your team, um, kind of put together like things that you guys already done for the event and things that you need to do or things that are kind of like pending. Um, so that'll kind of help you organize your thoughts and then delegate off those tasks. And that's it's not sprung on someone last minute and that you guys don't drop the ball somewhere. So connect with your team, um, put together all the tasks that you've already done, things that you're looking to do, and things that are pending and kind of put dates um, along there. Cool, thank you. Sharika, real quick, are, do you happen to use any project management tools such as Trello or Asana or anything like that? Yeah, I have used those in the past. Um, I'm not currently, I usually just track for me a lot in um, Excel tracking it that way with dates and stuff like that um to me like I've not tried Trello that you just said Asana I've used it in so many different aspects to me it's it's clunky um okay. so I don't really care for it I mean I use it on like other aspects of it but usually a spreadsheet um because for me it's all simple in my face Yep. So. yep. so, and this is for, for you, Sharika, anybody else, you definitely want to work with what works for you. Like that's first and foremost, but to make things more fluid with your, within your organization, especially you, you mentioned Sharika that you have a team. So anybody else who has a team, um, Monday's also a good resource. Thanks for that. Maywa. Um, again, there's tons of really great resources that are out there and available. Um, definitely take time to not just go and look them up yourself, but every single one of these, um, the, these um, virtual platforms, they have demos and you can actually connect with um, a representative from the program or organization service, what have you, and they will lead you um, through a live demo. And, and so I definitely suggest that any of you go ahead and take that time to do that. Again, it, it's just making your job so much easier when you're able to um, centralize the information in one place so you're not like oh I shared that with you shoot I didn't send it right and I'm not saying that for you Sharika that that's your your specific challenge but I know several other people that that's that's one of the things that they experience is oh dang I meant to send that email but I didn't well if you have an assistant or an intern or somebody else you can communicate with them that this needs to be done and insert that in a in a one of these systems and it gets done and you can watch it you know being checked off and again you know that that may not be your arena your lane that's where somebody else who's the, who that task is delegated to is able to make sure that they're mastering these things and it's in one central location so go ahead and take some time um i just encourage you to take some time um so go ahead and look those things up and then a final point this is on facebook um, my takeaway was looking into getting my project management certification. So shout out to all of you who are going to go and do some research on that and um, take some time to further and um, expand on your own skills as well as sharpen your tools so you can be continue to become a viable asset for other individuals and other organizations. And so if we don't have any other questions, Maywa, thank you so, so, so much for joining us today summer per usual thanks so much for being great and marco thank you no i'm kidding um no <laughs> but i really really am so grateful that every single one of you joined us um live and for those of you who are going to be watching the replay go ahead and grab your notes and the final thing that I wanna make sure that you remember, for those of you who are nonprofits, shout out to those of you who are nonprofits that were live today, you have two more sessions where you can get in if you have not joined us yet, where you can become eligible to receive um, the $1,000 cash prize for the nonprofit pitch competition. 
So once again, Comerica, thank you so much for um, being one of our sponsors for that $1,000 cash prize. And again, if you um, want to um, gather additional details on the pitch competition, it is not open yet. We're making you wait, yes, because we wanna make sure that you show up for yourself and for your organization. But in October, the, um, the applications are opening up for you to begin submitting for the pitch competition. So we're super excited for all the details to continue to come out around that. But the starting details, the terms and conditions are currently up on discoverher.org backslash Comerica Business Boot Camp Series. So I will make sure um, on Facebook that we're posting that link directly so you can go ahead and go over there to gather the details around the pitch competition, but continue to show up, continue to invest in you and continue making impact. We look forward to seeing you on the 27th for part two of project management, where we're focusing on the workflows as well as processes. Until next time, everybody, take care. Bye. Bye.